In the nomination process, you did not support John Lee, but you changed your tune and you are on the election committee. You voted for John Lee on Sunday. We know you changed your tune because he finally posted his manifesto and it appealed to your concerns about the lack of upward mobility for the youths here in Hong Kong. But doesn't this, this debate, if you will, demonstrate that Hong Kong essentially needs more than one candidate. We've heard the criticisms from the EU, from the G7, that democracy or the principles of democracy are being violated here. How do you respond to those criticisms, and do you think there should be more than one candidate? From traditional Hong Kong standpoint, we are used to choices. Uh, so you could say that uh, most people in Hong Kong would prefer to have a choice, which is what Beijing gave us in 2015 with the universal suffrage package where the nominating committee would nominate two candidates for everyone to cast their vote based on one man, one vote. Unfortunately, and I'm still very angry at this, the pandemocrats threw it out the window. So then uh, back to the 1500, basically all having very close ties with Beijing. Uh, people still uh, prefer probably to have two candidates, including myself, uh, because the 1500 can still have a choice. Uh, but uh, anyway, the central government decided that uh, they would uh, lean more towards the mainland model, which has always been a single candidate. So then you ask yourself the question, then why do you call it an election? Well, that single candidate still has to gather more than half the votes. And actually, everybody knows that in this kind of system, uh, getting more than half the votes is not a problem. The problem is how many dissenting votes do you get? On the mainland, if you get more than 10% dissenting votes, you basically lose your yep. credibility. So if you look at John Lee this time, he got eight out of 14, 16, which is what? I don't know, I haven't done the percentages, which is quite low, which I'm surprised because I do believe we have a secret ballot. I do believe we have a secret ballot. So that means that uh, really a majority of the 1500 decided to give him a chance, not because they feared that uh, people would find out how they would vote. So, Michael, very quickly, really, you know, you and I have debated the basic law a lot. Article 45 essentially says the ultimate aim is for universal suffrage for the chief executive. I mean, do you see, though, that, that we've taken that step backwards? There's going to be one candidate for the foreseeable future. Oh, well, John Lee might be there for 10 years. We don't know. But I, I, when can the pendulum switch back to that ultimate goal of universal suffrage, if at all? That's a million-dollar question, Stephen. Beijing gave us a chance to have a system different from the mainland by having choices. We threw it out. Uh, God knows how long it would take for us to be able to look at that again, the August 31st framework by the NPC uh, in 2015. Uh, whether it would go on forever or whether eventually they would at least first open up to the 1500 having two choices and then eventually going to the public. Since it's written in the basic law, uh, I hope and I assume eventually it will happen. But I doubt if it will be the next term. Maybe after two terms, when things quiet down, but everything remains to be seen. Do we have law and order? Is everything uh, now uh, back to efficiency and livelihood rather than political uh, bickering? Uh, it, uh, it remains to be seen the uh, how Hong Kong situation developed uh, during this particular term. But I had expected that even though I wanted a choice uh, this time, I had expected that probably right after the extradition, uh, extradition bill causing so much divisiveness that uh, most likely we wouldn't uh, get uh, uh, you know, a, a two-contestant uh, race. Mm. One of the policy priorities is to reopen borders. 
How optimistic are you that Hong Kong can return to some semblance of its former self when it comes to being a thriving and active business and financial hub? That's a very good question. Um, John Lee gave people an impression that, of course, he is a security minister, that uh, he put the relationship with the mainland in top priority, and since mainland has mainland has repeatedly uh, emphasized the importance of containing with COVID to the extent of having such a big turmoil in Shanghai. They still the top leadership today, just now, today, reiterated uh, their total um, uh, dedication to that policy. Um, I don't know, I hope not, uh, whether John Lee will start uh, uh, aiming really towards a real zero COVID for Hong Kong and start uh, tightening the social distancing measure, including um, the uh, 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 circuit breaker uh, system handling flights coming into Hong Kong. That's actually the one thing I am most interested to see when he takes office, whether he will make any changes to Carrie Lam's current policy, because Carrie Lam's policy at this point is opening up, uh, trying to uh, Michael, balance. Uh, Michael, do, do you see? I mean, I think everybody in the central di business district here, they want to know. Is there room? I mean, yes, he can go to Beijing and say we'd like to exercise our advantage of one country, two systems, and not necessarily do strict zero COVID. But do you think there is political room for John Lee to get Beijing to agree to Hong Kong to allow home quarantine, to remove those flight bans, all those steps that are keeping business uh, from happening and, and confidence from rising again in the international business community here in Hong Kong? You ask multiple questions. Um, the basic definition of continuing with uh, a zero COVID uh, in theory is that you must have uh, quarantine of some sort, whether you narrow it down from seven days to three days or two days. Having home quarantine does not count as uh, uh, adopting that policy. And the other issue is if you're tested uh, positive, you should be uh, isolated. These are the two fundamentals of China's policy. However, you could water it down to many, many versions. I am sure Johnny had a discussion with the liaison office uh, about uh, what he expected Hong Kong people or the international committee would want. And I think because of the lack of understanding and trust in the international committee about John, uh, because, he's, he, because he's basically a newcomer, Beijing would probably give him that latitude. 